Hi, I'm Emma Cowling and I run a group called Authentic Tech Leaders on Facebook. It's a free group set up as a community to help those who are working in tech who want to be leaders or who are, or who are leaders to be more authentic and to speak out more and be themselves more, um, bringing more innovation and, and diversity to the tech world. Um, now, as part of that group, I run a Stories to Inspire theme, um, which is a series of monthly talks um, where we share our stories, which are ordinary everyday stories, but which have had an impact on our lives. And um, so my story is about how breaking my leg made me more productive. And um, basically, I'm, I'm not going to go off and tell you to go off and break your leg in order to be more productive. But the story that I want to share here is how as a result of breaking my leg, um, it had an impact on my state of mind and the way that I showed up every day. And, and that, that impact actually made me more productive um, in the way that I then approach my work. And there are themes from within my life that I can now look back on and see that, that started there, but have continued to show up. And that's what I want to share within this talk. So having said that, let me get going and and let me set the scene so um if i go back it's about 13 years um i um was in a state where our company has just had just reorganized um my group had shifted from being 10 people to uh we're on we were on to um 30 people that were directly reporting to me so that was quite a challenge. Um, I'd been quite heavily involved in the whole reorganization in, 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 in advance. And I was still quite one of probably one of the most junior members um, or junior managers in the, the organization. So I was out to prove myself. Um, I had also just got involved in coaching. So I was learning that um, that, that goal setting was good, that setting small targets and, and getting things planned out was really good. And I kind of took this a bit to the extreme. So I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to prove myself, show, show to the people that I was managing and the people that um, were really, that I was, I was getting to know, that was raising my visibility across the organization. I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to control that and to show that I was good enough to be where I was and that I deserved to be in this management role and that I could kind of manage 30 people and no problem. And then about probably about two weeks after this reorganization happened um i'd been struggling with my back for a little bit and i got taken um i went to see a specialist and i found out that i needed a back operation so suddenly the rug was pulled on from under me this wasn't a kind of a simple back uh, sort of do go and do some physio which i thought it might be it was a right go and um uh, go away and in the next couple of weeks we will bring you back and we will be operating on your back and in the meantime here's my card in case anything happens and we need to take you in as an emergency so it's a pretty serious thing that was happening and I was so I was given two weeks notice for the fact that I was then going to be off work for for a good month possibly longer and so suddenly my whole world changed so and and so I know I've titled this as breaking my leg but this is the precursor to this was that I had a back operation and I had two weeks warning um, off the back of um, that, uh, off the back of um, the reorganization and all this stress that I had kind of piled on top of me. So suddenly I had two weeks to figure out what's important. What am I gonna hand over to people? What is it that, that is really important about what I'm doing to, so to make sure that this all, um, that, that the, 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 the key stuff carries on happening? And what is it that I can let go? And I just remember going down my to-do list and scrubbing things out and kind of going, nope, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. As, and as time went on, more and more stuff disappeared. And it really made me focus on what's important. So that's something that I just want to put out there is that kind of, okay, if I was to ask to tell you, you had two weeks to hand over the things that were really important to you, what would those things be? What would disappear immediately from your list? And maybe that gives you some insight on, on what is really important at the moment and, and what you need to do. 
that's just a starting point to get you thinking. And if you want to put your comments in, then please do. If, if, if something comes up for you, please put the comment in. I'd love to see what's going on in your thinking. A bit of interaction really helps me and sees, sees that people are listening and they're getting it. So, so if, if something comes to you, just, just put the comment in. So, okay, so, so I went off and I, I managed to hand over. The world didn't fall apart. Um, had my back operation, um, I was recovering pretty nicely and uh, a month um, later I was kind of preparing to come back to work and I um, managed to trip over a shoe and break my leg. So that sounds pretty clumsy. Now there's a couple of people I think are, list are on here and are in the group who, I, who knew me when this happened um, and they know that, that it wasn't just me being clumsy, actually what it was was that I was had a cyst in my bone, um, in my femur, so pretty big fat bone. And when I tripped over a shoe, it, it just cracked. Um, <laughs> so, so it just cracked. I've just seen Becky's comment. She's needing to hand over a job she's been in for 16, 16 years and she's avoiding doing it. Yeah, Becky, it does make us think about what's important, doesn't it? Um, and, and what really you want to carry on. So let's go back. So I'd broken my leg. I was coming back into the, um, I thought I was going back to work. I thought I was thinking about what was going on. And suddenly I was out for even longer. And um, that kind of, that was a pretty big shock. I was in hospital um, and I was in hospital for a month because they didn't know what was going on. So there was all sorts of questions about my health, which actually turned out to be fine, but it definitely made me step back and question even more what was important. But let's just, let's skip some of that. I'm, I can tell that story another day if you want to know what really went on. But it, in actual fact, I was out of work for four whole months. Um, and, and it was when I went back into work that I, that helped me see, um, well, I, I started going back and I realized that the, the, the company hadn't fallen apart as a result of me not being there. My group hadn't fallen apart as a result of me not being there. This idea that I was needed and that they needed me in order to keep on working, that was all complete crap that I'd made up in my head to feel important and all this sort of stuff. Actually, the world had carried on and they were okay. And the thing that was really empowering about that was that gave me a lot more flexibility to go in and kind of go, well, okay, what do I really want to do here? What, am I, what are the kind of bells and whistles that I can add on? If they don't need me, what value can I add? And, and that, was, that was a really interesting time to be going in and just being open to sort of seeing, well, what is it that people want from me, but also what can I give? What do I, what's the value that I really add? On top of that, the other thing that I found is that things that I'd handed over and delegated, people had picked up and they'd gone off in all sorts of different directions, directions that I wouldn't have gone in, things that, that I'd thought, this is going over here, they'd kind of gone off over here with it. And that was also really interesting because it often, <laughs> when I looked at it, they'd done much better than I had. They might have gone off in a different direction, but they'd come up with some new things that I wouldn't have even thought of. And I could then come in with my stuff and add to it. And so I learned that actually delegating, um, and in, in the pre previously I'd kind of delegated and tried to maintain control and keep it going in the direction I wanted to go. But I learned that actually delegating and step back, it gave them the space to be more innovative and come up with more insights and, and see what's going on. So, so that was kind of um, three kind of big things that came off, off the back of, of breaking my leg. Now, okay, so, so I've titled this, the, what, what did I, how did breaking my leg more be, help me be more productive? And I've just told you three things. So we're only 10 minutes in and I've told you three things. And so, um, and, and let me just kind of quickly skip and see. So a couple of comments about kind of that whole idea that I said, the first idea, if you were given two weeks to hand over what was important in your role, what was really important? And, and so Becky said she needs to hand over something she's in, in, been in for 16 years and she's avoiding doing it. And, and I'm questioning now, do you need to hand over anything, Becky? What is it that's really important? Helen's saying it's making her realize how much um, she has, <laughs> how much she would have to make sense of the chaos for someone in her work. So, but, but Helen, I bet if you had to, you would make sense of it. And I bet you'd pull out some, some key things. Um, 
and Lisa's just joined us. Hi, Lisa. So, so, um, so that's that's kind of the, the the first point that I'd pull out. Okay, if you had to pull out what's really important, what would it be? If you had to hand over in two weeks, what would it be? Next point, if you then had the openness to just step back and say, where do I add value? What's the thing that I bring, which is of real value? And, and to be able to explore that in your role, if you gave yourself the space to explore that, who knows what might come up? You might discover some, more, some other things. Um, and, and that's a really interesting question to ask. And then if you could delegate, so those some of those things that you've kind of now gone, well, actually, that's not important, that's not important. Maybe they're things that you could delegate and get someone in your group or someone, if, if you're a manager, or someone nearby to, to just run with a little bit. Delegation, um, it allows us to play with delegation a little bit. So there's three things. And if, you, if you're if you only listening to this, ten, to, for the first 10 minutes of this video, hopefully you've already got something out of it. But actually, I'm gonna go a bit deeper because um, although I learned those three things um, and I can see them looking back very clearly and I kind of got them back then, I actually then completely forgot them. Um, so, so when we kind of, when I then came back to, um, oh, if we fast forward for 18 months, that's, that's what I, I think is the best example here. If I fast forward for 18, 18 months through, um, I had got drawn back in. I was back in that situation of feeling like I needed to, to have control of everything. I was feeling like I needed to, um, to, to prove myself. The, the company had shifted again. There were redundancies going on. Some of my team were made redundant, which was really, really tough. Um, I, the, we, the company was being taken over and, and we were part of Siemens, we were being sold to another company. I, I, was, I, was, day, I was actually um, in a relationship with someone who was also a manager and um, between us we managed to kind of take on the idea that we were the, the, the key people in this company. It was a 500 people company, there's no way we were the key people. But it, it kind of, I'd taken on the idea that this was all on me. And, and I was in a much deeper hole than I had been kind of before I broke my leg. And, and in fact, I was pushing myself to the edge of breakdown. And if you'd have come to me then and said to me these three things that I shared, the kind of what's really important, why do you add value, what can you delegate? I would have gone, that's a load of crap. There's no way I can let go of any of this. The world is depending on me. And, and so I would have um, found, so I would have just completely ignored you. <laughs> And so the, what I want to share now is the kind of, well, okay, what's, what's really going on? Is there a way, and there is a way for, to, to know about this stuff without remembering those three things and to get this, these three things? So just carrying on with that story a little bit. So, so what happened to me then, okay? I was close to breakdown. I was close to kind of, well, I did actually take a couple of weeks out. I was feeling overwhelmed and I thought that the world was kind of on top of me. And, and I was taking it personally. I was so emotional in, in responding to everyone. I was flailing around trying to do everything and really not achieving anything. And, and although I was doing lots of stuff, I really wasn't productive. And I, I think some people, and, and certainly I know some of the, um, the people I work with that are in this group, I think they might recognize some of this as well because they've shared that with me. That's, it's so easy to get drawn into that, that state of mind. You feel like you need to keep on doing, but actually you're not really being very productive. And so what, what happened for me was a couple of things shifted and I realized, well, I was close to burnout. I had a bit of counseling. Um, and actually my relationship broke down and I saw that as a point where this was a really good time for me to make a move and, ch and change career and to, to, to move on in my role. Um, and as a result of some really good coaching, I didn't put pressure on myself to do that quickly. I took my time. So I actually stayed in the company for another 12 months having made the decision to move on. And what happened in that 12 months was absolutely amazing because again, I stepped back and I kind of went, well, if the company's going to have to survive without me. So what is it that I can do? And what is it that, that I can do to help my team to make sure that they know that I'm not just deserting them? But what is it that I can do to, to kind of 
to now move on and, and do that handover and just add the value. And what happened again was that I stepped back and I was kind of going, well, what's important? Where do I add value? What are the little nudges I can give? What, what is it that I can, can help people with? And I started to have conversations that made links that, um, that I just wouldn't, would have closed down a lot earlier. I started to look more strategically. I started to have more impact in what I was doing. And at the same time, I started to step away. So I was, I made new friends within the company. I went climbing, I learned to climb and I went away for weekends in Snowdonia and, and kind of learned to climb there. I did, I started playing football more and kind of made some amazing friends there. And all of this stuff happening outside my work, giving me a life meant that when I came into work, I had better perspective. And so instead of, like I say, instead of doing lots of stuff, the stuff I was doing was having impact. And that's, that's the kind of, that's, that's what happened. Um, and then as I moved on, when I found my job and I, I moved on up to York um, and I went into that role again, I found myself again in a position where I was in a new job and I could step back and I could add value. So we're going through this cycle. I've gone from kind of wanting control to, to going up and kind of realizing, okay, I can have impact and then getting drawn in, needing control, needing to prove myself. And, and there's this little sort of wave that I seem to go through. And it's only recently, um, in the last couple of years, that I've started to, I've come across this understanding which has helped me get insight into what's going on there. So that instead of kind of going, well, I must remember these things to remain productive, I've kind of gone, oh, that's what's going on. And that's the thing that I, I want to share with you now. So, so if I step back to that pre-period, the time when I, want to, I wanted to have control, the time when I was trying to prove myself, what was going on for me? Well, so what was happening was that I was basically in an insecure state of mind. I was feeling that I needed to prove myself to show that I was okay. In order for me to be okay, I needed to make sure that I had everything planned out and I needed to make sure that things happened to, according to that plan and I needed to predict the future and I needed to make sure that, that when I predicted the future, I had all the kind of back, backup plans in place in order to make sure that if anything went wrong, I, could, I would be okay. That's, that's what was going on in my head. I felt scared, I felt insecure, I was worried about failing, I needed to prove myself, all of these kind of pressures that were on me to making me feel like um, I, I wasn't okay. And then contrast that to what happened when I was in a, a um, after my broken leg, after I'd shifted job, after I'd let go of some stuff. What was happening there? Well, I no longer needed to prove myself. And actually, I felt like I was okay, I, no matter what. I'd broken my leg in that case and come out of that and, and realized that even when the worst could happen, that I had to come out of work and couldn't work for, for four months, life still carried on and I was okay. Actually, that made me feel a lot more resilient. It made me see that there was a lot going on. And so I felt okay, I felt resilient, I felt good. And as a result of that, I no longer had to, had to prove myself. I, I wanted stuff to happen, but it was much more adventurous. I, and and this, this is particularly relevant for that point where I was kind of going out climbing and going out and being on adventures. But it's kind of like, you know, you, you set yourself and you get to go out to go on an adventure and you want to get somewhere, but you don't know what's going to unfold. And, but you're open to it because you know you'll deal with it. It'll be okay. And that's kind of what the, the state of mind I was in, the state of mind of I am on an adventure. I am going um, to, to try and achieve this thing. But if it doesn't happen in the way I think it should do, then that's okay and I'll just deal with what comes up at the time. And so my, the difference between these two things is, was really my state of mind and the way that I was thinking about things. And that's what underpins it all. Because if you understand that your state of mind, when you're, when you're feeling pressured and down and low and insecure, that it's your state of mind that's, that's, the, the, that's the, the, the challenge, that's, that's, that's what's going on, it's what you're thinking about and the, the pressure that you're putting on yourself, then you don't have to remember kind of, well, I need to do this, I need to get back in a better state of mind. You just have to kind of go, well, I can, actually, it's my state of mind. And the key thing is that that state of mind will shift. You don't need to shift it, it will shift. 
So, so that's the, 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 the kind of the, the crux of what I'm sharing. Now, this is something which I can say it. Um, and I, if for me personally, I'm learning this um, and I've, I've, I've started to see it for myself. I've started to play with it and I've started to see that even though I still get drawn into those periods where I still feel I need to prove myself and I need to take control and all this sort of stuff, I, things shift a lot faster and I go, oh no, it's my state of mind. Um, I don't actually need to do this stuff. I, I'm getting caught up. Um, so, so let me just kind of share this message. So I'd, I'm, I'd be really interested to hear what questions you have around this and what's coming up for you, because I know that sometimes the way this is shared, it can feel like also oh, what she's saying is change your state of mind. And no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that stepping back and letting yourself settle and giving yourself space that can allow your state of mind to change and for you to come up. So when we're in that kind of intense period of kind of overwhelm and, and, product, and, and feeling like we need to control things, the last thing we want to do is step back. The last thing we want to do is let things settle because we feel like we need to keep on doing. But actually the, the thing we can do that, that can help us the most is step back and trust that things will work out and trust that we will get into a better place of where we can have more impact and do less. So, so if you've got any questions, please do stick them in there. Um, allow this to, the, I'm, I'm not going to come out of this, this, um, this half hour and, and give you a list of things to do. And that's the, the, the beauty of the, the understanding that I'm sharing. It's not about taking action. It's not about kind of getting it intellectually. But what you might find happens is that something shifts inside you and you start to kind of go, oh, that's interesting. And from that shift in understanding, what happens is that our behavior starts to change a little bit. And we start to kind of come out of, come out of these things a little bit more quickly. So, so let me just share kind of my top tips um, or my top message for this that's, that's come through. And so what, what I'm saying here is that this isn't about remembering tips about how to be more productive. That's not what my message is. Although those tips are useful, they can be really useful. But what I'm saying is at a deeper level, if you can remember that if you feel low, that you feel overwhelmed, that you feel stressed out, that you feel like um, you're trying to take control of things, anything that's making you feel off about something that you're doing, that's suggesting that you are getting sucked into this, this unhelpful pattern of thinking. And rather than carrying on pushing, step back, give yourself space, allow your thoughts to settle, and you will get to the point where um, a new, new thoughts, new ideas will come. It's about giving yourself that time and that space and trusting that it will happen. Now, I don't expect you to believe this. I don't expect you to just take this from what I'm saying. I've, I've put it into practice and I, I, it's worked for me. But what, what I'd suggest as the action to do from this is just start to play with it. Start to notice, start to have a go and see what happens in your life. Start to start with something small and see what happens and, and build up your confidence that actually, yeah, this is true. This is what happens. If I let go, then actually some of those things I was worrying about, I realized just weren't important. And some of them, the, the important stuff bubbles through. So, so that's kind of what the main thing that I wanted to share. Um, I've not got any more comments or questions coming through, but if you have got any, then please do. Um, I am going to continue to share this stuff. So if, you, if it's not kind of, you've not got an aha moment or anything uh, and you've not kind of gone, oh, right, that's what she means. I will be continuing to share this in the group from different perspectives. And there's a kind of underpinning understanding that will keep on coming through and, and it will shift and it will change. So keep on turning up and keep on what we stay in the, staying in the conversation. Um, keep on talking um, and, and exploring this thing. Thanks for listening. I hope you got some insight from that about how your productivity relates to your state of mind that you can take into your work and into your personal life and that it makes you more productive overall. 
If you would um, have any comments or any questions, then please do share them below. I will be coming back and I'll check in on them, respond to any questions, and I'll take the, the, the material and I'll use it to guide where I go with, with content in the future. As I said at the beginning, I'm Emma Cowling and I run a free group on Facebook called Authentic Tech Leaders with Emma Cowling. Uh, it is designed to help um, those who are in a leadership role or an aspiring leadership role in tech to be more authentic and turn up and, and develop their resilience and their self-confidence so that they can speak out and be themselves. Um, if that sounds like something you would be interested in, then the link is below. Please click on it and come and join us. If you want to go deeper than a free Facebook group, then I also offer a mentorship program, which is all about exploring state of mind from different perspectives. So not just how it affects our productivity, but also the resilience and the confidence that we have, the way that we approach leadership, the way that we interact with others. State of mind plays a part in all of these things. So my mentorship group explores these over a period of eight weeks and allows us to get into a lot more detail and, and really go out and test it in our everyday life and come back and, and, and kind of share with each other how it's going on. It's a small group. Um, it's quite a, a lovely community. So if this is something which could be of interest to you, um, then please do DM me or, or get in touch um, via the following links and um, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about it. So that's, that's it now for now. Um, I hope you've had a, 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 found this really useful and I look forward to seeing you soon and, and hopefully speaking to you soon and I hope you have a fantastic day.